Welcome to GUI Challenges, where I create interfaces my way, and then I challenge you to do it your way, because with our creative minds combined, we will find multiple ways to solve these interfaces and expand the diversity of our skills. Today's GUI, GUI challenge, challenge is a responsive side nav. We're talking a full mobile desktop layout with keyboard accessibility and just a little dollop of JavaScript. Let's see what I have. Join me in my debugging, debugging corner. corner. This is where I spend a lot of time because I can sort of set up multiple different environments. So what I have here is Chromium, Android, iOS, Safari, uh, Mac OS, Safari, Firefox, and Opera. And Opera over here has a, a emulation of a color preference set to light and a prefers reduced preference set. So this is why we see the light layout and we're gonna see the, the well, let's just see it, our side nav does not have motion over here, right? But if we're over here on Android, we do see motion in iOS, we do see motion. So that's really nice. We can also see that focus is being set to the open and close buttons. So when something is opened up, focus is set to the close button. And if we look closely as well, when we hover, we can see that there's a title that's on this close button. If we're really a student looking, we can see that the URL bar is changing while we click these as well. And that's because these aren't actually buttons, they are links. So this space here is being covered by a link. It's a backdrop link to sort of eat your click and send it as a close event. We also can close this with escape. So the escape key also sends the event to close it for keyboard listeners. And on top of that, we can use the keyboard to uh, open and close. So if we hit enter, we'll close. We hit enter again, we'll open. And we are uh, explicitly setting the focus to the open and close buttons after the event and the transition has happened. So that way someone can be uh, have this nice UX where they're conveniently opening and closing the menu. I thought that was really nice. Also notice our desktop layouts do not have the sidebar exposed. They also don't have uh, a close menu over, you know, there's no like link drop that I can click that sort of closes it and there's no hamburger menu. And we're doing all of this with CSS and just a little bit of JavaScript. Let's review what we got. So if we're talking about the responsive aspects of this layout, we're mostly going to be focused on our media queries here. So we did a media query of, you'll see max width 540. And the reason that we chose max width is we're kind of putting all of the logic for a slide out concept and in, in the different states that it has to a viewport that's really small. So if I drag this one out, we'll see that, that it's gone. And now that the state in the URL bar won't change the layout at all. And so we're just sort of like containing everything into that little concept of space. So uh, we're watching to see what position or what size the viewport is, and then we're changing the layout from a two column layout in grid to a one column layout. And that's done right over here, display grid. We're creating a new grid with some shorthand that's one row named stack and two columns. The first column is called min content, has no name. The second column is called stack and it's taking up the rest of the space. So this first column is our side nav and it's essentially self sized. And our main column is its own size and it will do, uh, well, it's the rest of the space. It will fill just like water. And when we're at a max width of 540, we're gonna go find those two columns and we're gonna set them to the same column. We're gonna set them to the same row, to the same column, and that will make them stack. And once they're stacked, we can look to see, again, if our max width is 540, we're gonna start setting the position of our items on here so that they can be like a scrollable side nav. We get a position of sticky, where at the top, we're gonna to be the height of the viewport. We wanna overflow and like scroll inside of our own space. And we're gonna position you off the page. We're gonna prepare the browser for a transformation, and we're gonna say that we wanna transition this element as it's transformed is changing. We're going to do that over, you know, this default duration amount of time, which is 0.6 seconds, unless someone says they want to like have less motion, then we just set the duration to one millisecond. And now this whole entire animation can work uh, with someone's preference and not even know what's happening. So let's get to the pseudo class part of this. So we were using links to open and close. When we click a link, we're setting the URL. If we look at these, we can see the URL is changing to hashtag side nav open, hashtag side nav open. And even on the page where we don't see a side nav open, we see the URL changing and I can close it. And that's uh, just how it is. That's because these are all syncing across. But anyway, when that hashtag is matching side nav open, so that it looks like an ID in CSS, right? It, it should. And if we use that exact name for our element of our side nav 
and uh, we set that in the URL bar at the same time, we match this target. So this target says, hey, does this element have the same ID as the URL hash does? If it does, it's selected and now you can do stuff with that state. So we are storing state in the URL bar, leveraging it right here through a CSS ID and a selector. And then we can set this thing to visible when it is the target, we'll translate it back into the viewport. So we'll set it to zero, which is essentially its initial resting place. And we'll make sure that we transition out of this as well. So super cool stuff right there uh, to be able to use that in new state with just links and the URL bar and a CSS selector. People have done crazy. Yeah, I think I've seen people build games with this. So you can build games with that logic. I decided to just make it open and close the menu. So that is the, the majority of the, the workload here. We used a two column grid to go to a one column stack. We did that with a little bit of CSS. And then we're using transforms to move our sign nav off the screen only when we're in a mobile sized viewport, all with just a little bit of CSS. So let's talk about some of the final touches that we do with JavaScript. In, in the JavaScript, we are watching for the escape key because we want someone to be able to um, close the menu in maybe a frantic way or a way that they uh, expect. And the escape key is a great way to close something that you've opened. So we listen to the escape key. We also watch for the animation end event to happen on our side nav. So when it opens uh, and the animation is completed, uh, an event gets fired to JavaScript and JavaScript says, hey, we've opened up. I'm going to set the close button to be on focus. And then when the transition has closed and the side nav has completely exited the viewport, we say, let's set focus to that open button. And that creates that cyclical UX experience for keyboard users and just the visual for yourself as you open and close that where the highlighted areas are for you to be drawing to next to manage that piece of element that you're, you're looking at. And that's it. We do go into the HTML and sprinkle in some ARIA roles and some other accessibility items here. I'll even um, quickly show you how some of that stuff works. So if I'm here on uh, Chrome and I hit Command F5, I'll pull open the screen reader. Shift down, leaving web content. So here we are inside of side nav GUI challenges. Link, open menu, menu. We have a link that can open a menu. Visited link, close menu, complimentary. Th this link will close menu to the complementary uh, element. So we have a side nav that's complementary to a main. And the screen reader is telling this user that this button here will activate a complementary item or will close a complementary item. Visited link, open menu, main. Open menu, main. It's associated with main. Link, close menu, complementary. Right. So what we've done is made sure that if someone is focusing on these and they can't see that they're getting audible clues that help them know what this is going to do. And these little touches will help someone drastically as they're navigating your site and trying to figure out how to get to the thing that they came here to get. And that concludes this GUI challenge. And of course, like always, the code is open source. You can grab it, you can change it, you can uh, completely delete it. I, I, I don't know, do whatever you want with it. This is really fun. And I want you to feel inspired to go build a side nav of your own, whether or not that uses, you know, pseudo classes and CSS grid, it doesn't matter. There's ways to make mine better. And there's ways to that yours can solve your problems even better. And I hope this was inspiring in some way. 